Hello everybody and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic and today, uh, the, it just never stops. It just never stops. Every single day we have a new bonehead coming out of the woodwork saying something just silly. So last night actually this article dropped. Uh, this is on The Wrap but it's been covered on other sources as well and it's now Mindy Kaling who's never really hit herself as not being an SJW but now it's just jumping on the same statement that Brie Larson talked about and to me it's almost like they're trying to make up a new excuse so anytime that they're in a film anytime that they do something that doesn't get praise that doesn't do well oh it has to be because it's just a bunch of white people who aren't getting it right who just don't understand so I I, I just I'm really getting tired of this because it's just getting ridiculous so anyway the article Ocean's 8 Star calls out unfair dominance of white male film critics again no one is stopping you anyone else from becoming a film critic Especially in today's world, you can easily start a YouTube channel, you can start a blog, you can start so many different things, and you can get your voice out there. So no one is stopping these voices from getting out there. In fact, many sites like Rotten Tomatoes, like other media sites, are likely going to boost you because of your background, because that is just how they view the world. They think to ourselves, oh, we need more people like this, and so let's just force it out there, instead of just, you know, awarding jobs and giving contracts to people who deserve it based on merit alone. Again, this is just how people think these days, and it's just getting really upsetting. So anyway, this is the quote from Mindy Kaling. If I had to base my career on what white men wanted, I would be very unsuccessful. Okay, well, no one's telling you to do that. I get, you're, you, you have this perception in your mind that if anyone doesn't like your work and they happen to be white, that it must be because they're white that they don't like your work. Again, it, it just it's a self-centered, self-focused point of view that's just not based in reality. It's in this fantasy realm. Again, we always talk about this, how they live in this bubble. SJWs especially live in this just bubble of their own ego, and they can't get out of it. And anything that isn't a part of that bubble, anything that doesn't agree with what's in their bubble must be hate, must be racist or sexist, etc. And that's the reason why you see them constantly say that even though they just uh, they just don't live in reality. So anyway, Ocean's 8 star Mindy Kaling has some salt for white male film critics during a recent interview, criticizing the lack of diversity in film criticism and how that affects the reception of works featuring non-white and female performers. No! Okay, and, and, and if you're going to make this point, you need to use a better example than A Wrinkle in Time or Ocean's 8. Because I saw A Wrinkle in Time, and A Wrinkle in Time was garbage. It was awful. And in fact, when even liberal critics who are pro-SJW story storyline story, story arcs story arcs are going to give it bad reviews, are going to criticize the film, you know that it is a it objectively a bad film. A poorly made movie. And... It just amazes me that now the excuse is, oh, well, if you look at the majority of those critics, they're mostly white men, and that's the reason why. They just didn't understand it. They just couldn't appreciate it. I would have wanted – this is going back to what Brie Larson said. I would have wanted to hear what a mixed-race person would have to say, what a teenage mixed-race person would have to say about this. Okay, that does not change the movie. That does not change how good or bad the movie is. Again, there is absolutely a subjective view when it comes to films, but there's also an objective view as well. Best example for that is the movie The Room, which is considered to be the best worst movie of all time because objectively, it is a terrible movie, but subjectively, many people love it. So when you look at movies like A Wrinkle in Time, objectively, it was not a very good film. And yet, they're ignoring that and instead saying, oh, it's all subjective, it's all subjective, and it's all because people are white and they can't understand and they just don't like it because of that. No, it has nothing to do with that. A movie is good if a movie is good, period. Again, people might have different opinions on the overall film itself, but there is definitely an objective reality that just cannot be ignored. And so when people like this are using examples, when SJWs are using examples like this to try and justify why their movies failed, it's because they have literally no other reason and they don't want to admit the fact that they chose a bad project and it was a poorly made film. Oh my goodness, this is just getting ridiculous. All right, if I had to base my career, again, that's the quote from earlier. She said that to Yahoo. So there is an obvious, there is obviously an audience out there who wants to watch things like Ocean's 8, what I work on and what Sarah Paulson works on, etc. Okay, well, here's the thing. It's a very small number. Again, is Ocean's 8 going to make a profit? Most likely. I mean, looking at the numbers right now, it looks very well, uh, you know, not great. It's not going to be a huge box office success, but it's probably going to turn a profit uh, nonetheless. Not a very large profit, but still going to turn, Ocean's 8 is probably still going to turn a profit nonetheless. But people are going to want to see it if it's a good film. The problem with Ocean's 8, I haven't seen it yet, and I, and I plan on just because I want to be able to give a full objective review on it, is that it's a movie that no one really wanted. Again, if you're going to make a story about a, a group of women doing a heist, then make your own film. 
can write that story. No one is stopping you from writing those stories. The problem is is that people get mad when people make Ghostbusters, an all-female Ghostbusters, and now an all-female Oceans film. And the problem is is that you're taking a previous concept and you're twisting it, just adding women to it, and then expecting, hey, you got to like it now because it's all women, and that's what people want, right? No. Again, make your own stories. That's why we have films like uh, Tomb Raider. That's why we have Ellen Ripley from the uh, Alien franchise. Again, we have strong female characters, and you have good, strong female stories, but they're just not really being made today. Instead, we're just having these spinoffs. Instead, of we're just having these these uh, these newly found and newly discovered and new ways of telling a story, but it's based off an old property. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see that. It's our, We already have a big enough problem in Hollywood with sequels and sequel fatigue. So many movies being made in a franchise. So when you're just going to remake the same movie just with females instead and that's the main pitch that you have. Because again, I've seen a lot of people reviewing this film and the biggest critique that they have is, well, it's just a rehash of everything that the, o- the previous Oceans film have done. And it's not very inventive. It's not very creative. And based on the trailers, I can tell you, yeah, that's exactly what I see. I literally see a almost a shot for shot remake of the Oceans, all three Oceans films. And all they did was add women to it. And that's just not a good film. That's that's just lazy filmmaking. It's lazy writing. That's lazy directing. And when people like Mindy Kaling are coming out saying, oh, well, people don't like it because we're women and, oh, we're people of, of, of color, et cetera. No, that has nothing to do with it. So just get yourself out of that own personal bubble that, you put your, that you're putting yourself in and come back to the real world, please, because that is not what people are seeing. And that's not the reason why people are criticizing your films. Okay, has nothing to do with the race of the people on screen, for the most part. Again, as I said, as I always say, is there a small minority of people out there who are doing these things because they're racist and sexist? Yes. Again, there's a very, very small number of people that actually do that. But when it comes to the big, the vast majority, the people who aren't going to see Ocean's 8, the people who did not go see – I mean, because, again, when we talk about box office bombs, when it comes to the last year – a Wrinkle in Time was a huge box office disaster. I mean, that movie lost a lot of money. Millions of dollars were lost on that film alone. And you, what was the story of that? What was, what was the story of that film? It wasn't. Oh, it's such a great story. Oh, it's so strong, and the characters are great. No. What was it instead? Oh, this is the this is the first time a woman of color has directed a film that cost over a hundred million dollars. Okay, that has no bearing on whether the film is good or not. So when a when a story is focused on that, you know that the film probably isn't very strong. If that is what they're driving on, not the content of the movie, but instead everything surrounding it, that is when you know that there's something wrong. And same thing here. We see Mindy Kaling again now jumping on that same train saying, oh, well, the only reason why our film isn't doing well and the only reason why people are being critical of it is because most of the people doing the, doing the criticism are a bunch of white males and that's the only reason why it's not doing well. I mean – Get over yourself. I mean, this is just ridiculous. Just get over yourself and come back to reality, please, because that's just, again, no one is stopping people from any race or any background from jumping into film criticism. And also, just because someone is a certain race does not mean they cannot have a valid opinion. Because with that same logic, you're saying, okay, so you're saying that a film that's directed by a white man that has mostly a white cast, etc., are you saying that only white critics can have a valid opinion? Are you saying that people of color can't have a valid opinion? Because you have to use the same logic. You can't just say, oh, this logic works only in these particular circumstances but doesn't work here. Again, you have to remain consistent. But I guarantee you probably wouldn't say that. And if you did, you would say it just because you want to save face. But because your argument just, again, falls falls flat on its face, falls apart when you actually put it to scrutiny. And it's just, oh, my goodness, these people. Now, first Brie Larson, now Mindy Kaling. And I mean, Mindy Kaling has never really hit it, hit her own per- point of view before. You know, Brie Larson was more of a surprise because she's never really been that outspoken about various things. But now we have two people coming out, and it's just excuses. That's all that it is. It's just excuses trying to explain away why movies are struggling, why movies aren't doing well. And instead of just facing the fact, oh, maybe your movie wasn't very good. You know, maybe Wrinkle Time was total garbage, which it was, which is the reason why – it had terrible reviews on Rotten Tomatoes, which is why it lost millions of dollars because no one wanted to see it. It had bad word of mouth because it wasn't a very good film. Because when you just focus on the message, when you just focus on SJW nonsense, the film is not going to do well. I'm sorry, but you have to make a good movie. You can have all that other stuff in there you know, if it's done well, if it's done smartly. But if you just focus on that message without making a good film, without being original in your content, which is what we now see with Ocean's 8 because it's basically just a rehash of all the previous Ocean's films. And we've already had enough of those already. So why would you think doing another Ocean's film but only adding women to it? Yeah, that's going to be something that's going to bring people in because people just want to see women on screen doing the same characters that were done in previous films. Again, that's just – again, be smart. Again, there's nothing wrong with having 
female protagonist. There's nothing wrong with having a female-led cast. I mean, just look at Bridesmaids. Again, I personally didn't like Bridesmaids, but a lot of people did. It was very high rated. It made a lot of money. And why was it? It was an original story featuring in many people's opinions, good, strong characters. So make those movies. Don't make Ghostbusters reboot 2016. Don't make, uh, you know, A Wrinkle in Time where it's just, it takes away everything that, everything that the author originally intended, takes away all the Christian themes that were part of A Wrinkle in Time, and instead just puts their own political messaging in it and expect people to go see it. You can make good original films, and that's where you're going to see people actually start to actually go see your films, but also speak highly of your films as well. All right, Kaling added, and the thing about so much of what this movie is, I think, white men, and critics would enjoy it, would enjoy my work, but often I think there's a critic who will damn it in a way because they don't understand it, because they come at it a different point of view, and they're so powerful Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my goodness gracious, this is just... All right, and then that's the same statistics in the article that I, that I read pre- previously. So, again, according to her, people who criticize any film that she's in, Ocean's 8 is the one that she's talking about now, but I would even, by extension, go this go back to her previous work this past year, which was Wrinkle in Time, that when people criticize it, if they're a white male, it's because they came at it in a different way, and so therefore they couldn't appreciate the film because they were a white male, and therefore because they're a white male, they can't possibly understand it or appreciate it. Uh, Again, this is the logic of people in Hollywood right now. This is the logic that they try to use to justify any reason why someone might not like their film. So, again, going back to Wrinkle in Time, it was a garbage film. Just look at the ratings. Look at the box office numbers. They speak for themselves. And I'm sorry, but when you don't have actual content in your film, it's not going to do well. When it cannot stand on its own, and instead it stands on this political messaging, it's going to fall apart. That's what we see with Solo. That's what we saw by the end of The Last Jedi. And we're going to continue to see that with Star Wars films going forward if they don't change the narrative there. And also, that's what we saw now with Ocean's 8. Again, Ocean's 8, I think, is actually at least going to turn a profit, but it's not going to be a huge boss office success, and it doesn't take away the fact that critics have been harsh with it, and that audiences aren't really liking it so much, but it has nothing to do with the race, it has nothing to do with the gender of the person speaking, it has everything to do with the fact that the film itself, objectively speaking, is not very strong and could be so much better. But anyway, guys, have you read this article? Are you getting tired of this just nonsense coming out of Hollywood? You know, first Brie Larson, now Mindy Kaling. Let me know in the comments below. I'd greatly appreciate it. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Also, give me subscribe if you haven't done so already and also please share this video as well it would really help me out a lot and also i'd greatly appreciate it as well and so have a great day and as always god bless